My work is in the area of complex fluids and complex flows. Now, fluid flows are a very important aspect of our daily life. There are two ways in which fluids flow. One is what is called a laminar flow and one is called a turbulent flow. And this transition is a rather abrupt process and it affects many things that happen around us in the atmosphere, in the oceans and in our daily lives within our bodies in various aspects. So one of the areas that I've been working on is this transition from laminar to turbulent flows, especially in the context of uh, soft tubes and channels such as in our cardiovascular and pulmonary systems. Uh, for many years, the assumption was that blood flows exactly the same way in our arteries as the flow in a pipe, for example, from the tank to your water faucets. We have recently uh, been doing work which indicates that the flow of blood in soft-walled tubes is actually very different from what it is in, in rigid tubes. That has uh, implications for many things, for example, for cardiac diseases such as uh, atherosclerosis, for example, the way that the flow exerts stresses on the wall affects how the disease develops. Other areas involve complex fluids, uh, fluids like uh, soaps, surfactant solutions, which are structured. Uh, there, there is a, a, a relationship between the structure in the fluid and how it flows as well as in the case of flows of particles, powders and so on. Uh, these are very complex flows and we still do not have uh, ways of getting the macroscopic, the, the large scale flows as a function of the interactions between individual particles. So that is an area where a lot of my research focuses on. So there is always a, 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 a desire to make things which are uh, more consumer friendly, more user friendly, and which can behave in certain ways that are of uh, importance to us, both as far as function and as far as form is concerned. Uh, one of the complex fluids that we work with is what are called lamellar liquid crystalline media, which basically consists of sheets of uh, surfactant molecules separated by water layers. Now these are used typically in cases where you require very high stiffness for fluids, such as for example hair conditioners or butter substitutes. Even though these materials are very stiff, uh, the reason for that large stiffness is actually a puzzle because if you had sheets of fluid just flowing past each other, they should not slide pretty easily. And uh, that is something that has been puzzling us for some time and we have been trying to make out from a molecular description, can we uh, simulate the fluid at a larger level and look at the reasons for why this large stiffness uh, uh, arises. And that opens the possibility of actually making designer fluids where you can change the molecular composition in order to get a certain behavior at the large scales. With the advances in technology, there has been a great deal of promise of what are called lab on chip devices where the entire diagnostic laboratory is supposed to be shrunk to a small chip the size of a credit card or less. We do have devices of that sort, the glucose meters for example, are examples where this has actually been actualized and commercialized. However, anything that requires uh, sample preparation, mixing fluids together and so on, those are difficult to miniaturize. The reason is because at the small uh, dimensions, fluids do not mix very well. Fluids are in laminar flow at the small dimensions and mixing takes place by diffusion, which is a slow process. And that has been one of the technological bottlenecks in re realizing these lab on chip devices in commercial applications. One aspect of our research is actually trying to see if we can induce turbulence at small scales so that the mixing can be much faster. I found myself in the position of a technical advisor to a startup company, MicroX Labs. They are trying to commercialize a low cost diagnostic device which can be used in resource challenged environments. If we can actually make a disposable cartridge based device which does not require skilled manpower, which is low cost, low power and uh, 
does not require uh, things like uh, 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 electrical supply and so on, which can be placed in primary health care centers, that would significantly improve the, uh, the health care in rural areas. Places like ISC are primarily for the dissemination and creation of knowledge, for teaching and for research. They do have a niche position in the startup uh, ecosystem uh, because they are the places where we actually create possibilities for the future. A large section of the startup ecosystem is actually doing, uh, fulfilling its primary role of trying to actualize the future that has already been forecast. Whereas places like us have to create possibilities that have not yet been forecast. And I think we have to strengthen uh, the ability to do fundamental research because that is where it all starts. When I first uh, got, uh, uh, was notified that I had got the Infosys Prize, I was a little surprised because I did not realize that I had been nominated this year. And then I looked at the citation. What struck me was that the jury had actually done a thorough job. Uh, there were things in the citation which would not have occurred to me first off if you had asked me about my own research. Having somebody else actually look at your work and, and finding value in it is something that is very fulfilling professionally for anyone.